What's up guys, it's Alex Rome and today I'm going to show you how to professionally layer leads. So what brought me to this video today? Well, I've been doing plenty of private lessons lately and a main concern along with a lot of the other particularly specific concerns uh, that often come up. Um, this is one of the, uh, an often occurring one, which is layering. Not a lot of people understand layering. Um, and this issue arises, I, li I like, I know where this issue comes from. You go and you watch a bunch of tutorials, you watch a bunch of in the studios, you watch Avicii in the studio, you watch a Martin Garrix in the studio, like every producer in the world has seen those videos. And when they get to their leads, there's always a million different layers on top of those leads. Not only that, but you can listen to any song across the board and you hear these magnificent leads and they always sound like there's a lot to them. And that is because there is a lot to them and that is because there's a lot of layering. Layering is really good. I used to say, uh, well, I still recommend this. I recommend if you're not uh, advanced enough to stick with single layered leads, single layered everything until you advance and, and realize the point of layering. What I'm trying to get to though, is when you are layering leads, you have to keep in mind that every layer has a job. Every layer needs a job. Two layers can't be doing the same, same exact thing because a lot of times those layers will clash and you'll get this muddy, weird sound. However, sometimes you can layer the same type of sound, the same sounding sound on top of itself and that'll thicken everything and give you a very nice sound. If you do that seven times, now you might run into a little bit of issues. So what I'm going to talk about in this video and show you is how to correctly layer leads so that you don't get yourself caught in a pickle where you have too many lead layers on top of each other and now everything sounds like shit because none of them have none of these layers have a particular job. Before we jump into this though, I want to mention that there are a couple jobs that you can have in mind when layering leads. You could have very wet layers, like layers with a lot of reverb and delay. You could have very dry layers so that your lead is as close to the listener as possible. You could have very wide layers, so your layers are very wide. <laughs> you could have layers panned to the left, and you could have layers complementing the right ear. You could have layers that are very low frequency and layers that are very high frequency. You could have plucky, heavy, transient, percussive layers, and you could have mellow, sustained tail layers. All these layers do very important things, and you can combine all of those things to create some massive shit. That's kind of like what orchestras do. They're just layers and layers of a lot of the times the same instruments just kind of working together to create this big wall of sound this thick wall of sound so how do we layer leads um, by the way I, I took inspiration from a Drulu song to get this lead right here they use music boxes I feel like anytime they're bored or something <laughs> or anytime they need inspiration this is their go-to instrument uh, but by the way, before we get into this, guys, I got to represent AlexRomeSound.com. It's your one-stop shop for lessons, courses, and sound banks. By the way, we got that new sound bank, Sounds of the Future. Go ahead and use discount code FUTUREBASE to lock up those sounds for 25% off your purchase price. Let's get into this, guys. Okay. So, professionally layering leads. I'm going to show you five different layers that I threw on to this lead to increase the overall sound. By the way, I just whip this up. So if anything sounds out of place, forgive me. This is more demonstration for the lead purposes. Okay. So that is going to be the original lead sound that comes in very early before everything opens up. The purpose 
of that sound is to be very light and to be very obviously jingly and music boxy and very emotional works well with the chords so this sound is almost solely for the melody a light melody I enhance that melody with a backing of some reverb heavy lead like this and this will just create something going on in the background and something going on far away so it's kind of like a texture in a way Okay, now we got that. Since my main sound is this plucky little music box that I got in Contact 5, this is not a third party plugin from Contact 5, it's a one that comes with Complete 10. So, yeah, I guess it's a third party plugin, but it's not like I went shopping for Contact 5 plugins and found that. That just comes with Complete 10 if anybody has Complete, uh, which a lot of people have Complete, so. Um, I layered this obviously with this alone this sounds like this and I figured okay here's what we got I need that backing to be a little bit thicker before I move on so I added another layer of high reverb super saws so right here you can see like these are just super saws and they're high reverb so what the purpose of these two layers are is to be a heavy reverb sound now my other sounds aren't gonna be crazy reverb heavy unless there's a purpose for them to be they're just gonna have a little tiny bit of reverb to get rid of the dryness so I landed on this sound right here Together, we had this. I wanted something more though. I needed a higher frequency layer than what we had right here. So I took this layer and put it in octave up. Notice none of these layers are doing the same thing besides these two layers. And what's funny is I'm actually thinking like we could probably pull this off without that one. Because I don't usually, that one looked like just kind of a filler. And I like the sound of this one better. And this one is kind of just like that ghost lead in the background. It could be a ghost lead. But anyway... So we have the high reverb kind of ghost lead in the background to create that backing sound like that lead behind the lead. And then we have this lower frequency sound that's going to get punchier and more aggressive to kind of support this a little bit better. Yo, Zach, if you're watching this video, man, uh, let me know. Sick lead from Zach. Zach's a viewer of the channel, and he gave me one of these leads, but I actually didn't use it. <laughs> anyway, this was the final layer that I landed on right here. This is that aggressive, high compression lead that spreads out and gets really, really big. Obviously, you can hear that. But just so I didn't go too close to that house music sound, I kept it mellow. <laughs> Keep it mellow, mellow gang. Oh! Listen to too much marshmallow. Anyway, we kept it mellow with the music box lead. Supplemented it with that low frequent, lower octave lead. And we had that ghost lead in the background, just kind of filling everything out. So 
So just like that, you bring in all your lead layers, complement it with a bass layer, and you got a fat ass sound. Watch this. very very pretty so remember guys every lead or every layer in general no matter what you're layering has to have a job every layer needs a specific job just like every employee needs a specific job when you put two employees on the same job yeah the job gets a little bit more thick but when you have a lot of employees doing a lot of different things you get this fat ass production that we just heard right here baby that was Alex that was another installment of an Alex Rome tutorial if you guys enjoyed this tutorial and took any value from it leave me a big old thumbs up subscribe here if you're new and turn on the notifications so that you can get notified every time I do something crazy like this so that you guys can take absolute value from this video from these videos every time they come out and of course what's the last one Comment your thoughts in the comment section below. I'm loving you guys' comments lately. Love them so much. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace out.